Hello everyone, this is CJ Novo 992 and today we're back for another brand new video and it's an early upload today and it's the day that we finally get to use our Christmas calendars from an elderly relative for something other than a birthday trip. So today is the day that will be remembered as we finally, and I mean finally, make a Rangers transfer sign and as the rumour we spoke about four or five days ago is finally in the door so it's time to throw our hands out collectively and say welcome Modia Mandy. Now, of course, addressing the old elephant in the room, and <laughs> I'm not talking about me, that's hurtful. I'm still trying to lose the Christmas mate. The actual elephant in the room is, of course, we have discussed the Amandi. We've broke down, we've kicked the tyres, we've seen what's under the hood in that rumour video. But I know there is people that don't like watching rumour videos, and again, I know there will be channel legends that watch all the videos. So, what I'm going to try and today, day in today's video, sorry, is tell you some new stuff because. When you actually sign someone, it does sort of clear the mist away and you can really start diving to the depths of this transfer signing. And there's a lot to discuss because there's the money that's going to cost to actually bring them here, which is obviously a massive one. You then have the competition for places and obviously the conversation about do we need another midfielder? Should we be signing another midfielder? Very important talking points we will discuss right here in today's video. And if you have been screaming in the comment section over the last couple of days saying we didn't need to sign a midfielder, what we're doing, please consider watching the next couple minutes as I think by the time today's video is done, I'll maybe open your eyes to what a midfield crisis we actually have because not only do we need a midfielder, it's been a priority for the last couple seasons so stay with me in that aspect but again for those who did go ahead and watch the actual video don't worry I'm not just going to sit here and repeat it I'm going to try and bridge the gap of the rumour video in this one so everyone leaves today's video knowing just a little bit more, a bit more Diamande and not bore them. <laughs> and I think we'll start today's video where it probably needs to be started. What type of transfer actually is and is of course a loan with an, uh, an obligation to buy. That is the key difference. So you're bringing them in on loan, which was what we kind of expected at first anyway before the news started to break, but then there's an obligation to buy. Now this isn't a Malik Tillman situation where you have the option to buy that the club can then change their mind if they're performing and doing well. They've just done the same with PSV. By the way, it's no that at all, it's an obligation. So this man will become a Rangers player at the end of this season. So you hear loan, you say, yeah, you hear 4.5 million, you go, oh, and that shows you <laughs> there is certainly something in this player to be willing to sign off on that type of outlet. And it's been really interesting to look at the two completely different fan base reactions towards the transfer value because on our side, we are all went, that is a lot of money, especially for a centre midfielder. He's not a goal scorer, he's not a bagsman, and I know people are frustrated about us not going and getting that, but you look at it, 4.5 million is the type of value you're expecting to spend when you want to bring in young talent and it's only going to go up this way. It's no a over the hill and far away English player who's on the way up or a please fix me challenge because I've been bad for five years. This is a player with a glowing reputation. It's only getting better who's captain his club at the age of 21 years old. That is turning head. So if you want that type of talent, you need to go and get it. And clearly Clement and Big Cop in the old directory football believes in this type of player. And Big Cop, the directory football, has had great success from his time at PSV for identifying targets and bringing in people, not only for the likes of the Scandinavian market, but elsewhere. And this is another one he's now looked at, brought to this football club that Clement's obviously signed off for. And again, I know we're scarred based on what happened in the summer recruitment with a lot of Beals, uh, misses rather than actual hits that he brought in to the football club. But again, it's new scouts, it's new people, there's a new manager, it's a new regime, so we need to give this guy a complete wreck for what happened in the summer and no bring that nervous negative energy that we have actually got. Clement has signed off on this. Has that man gave us any reason no to trust him so far as a Rangers manager? No. No for me, so I'm very excited about this potential deal. But I talked about the two completely different fan base reactions to this. You know how we're nervous about the 4.5 million? It's, it's a lot of money, that. It's CJ, that makes me very, very nervous. Well, if you actually read the Danish market, the way that's getting reported in the, not only the club, but the league itself, they are absolutely fuming that this, by, this guy's been allowed to be loaned out and then only to be purchased for 4.5 million. We're raging and nervous that it is 4.5 million, and they're raging that they're not getting enough for 
a guy that captained the club at 21 in the Danish market feels like they have been robbed. So it just shows you the completely different mindset you can have regarding a player. But for me, I think this is a sensational bit of business for Rangers, truly. Bringing them in on loan and then paying for them in the summer, that's the type of management and the type of transfers we beg and plead to go ahead and day. But the actual deal itself, bringing in a midfielder, is something that's been hotly, hotly debated right here on the channel, and I'm sure elsewhere, as well as everyone's had their say on us going ahead and making a midfielder a top priority. Why is it no a striker? Why is it no Shanklin? Why is it no a right midfielder? I've seen the conversation and I agree with some of it, but when you actually start to look at it, ladies and gentlemen, the midfield position has been badly neglected for far, far too long, and it's in a complete mess, not only with up and down form for certain individuals, but injuries have absolutely destroyed the midfield department in this Rangers team. And again, give me the next couple of minutes of your time, and I will show you just how badly that actually is, because we're going to go through every centre midfielder we have at the football club and just wait to see what it looks like when we get to the end of it, right? We're going to start off with the... And it feels awkward because obviously he's now retired from the football club. It's none other than Stephen Davis. But at the start of the season and last season, he was a centre midfielder for this football club. So he does need to be mentioned in that aspect. But I'm not going to say anything negative about the lad. I absolutely love this guy. You know, if you've watched this channel, he's a true hero of mine. A footballer's footballer. Never done anything wrong in his career. Just turned up to work played his dream, got his dream, earned his dream and I absolutely loved the laddie and it's, it was an emotional watching him retire but again he has been on the books for Rangers and it helps with this conversation regarding centre mids and centre mid recruitment. So love you Davo, enjoy your retirement, hopefully you're back at the club very soon in some type of coaching role but we're going to list them in today's video with no disrespect to the laddie but again to highlight the centre midfield problem that's not just this season but it's been in previous. So we have Stephen Davis. Next up we have John Lundstrom who has missed time through injury and now to be fair he is one of our better performing midfielders but again there has been games where he's missed and he's picked up little niggles and knocks and his form can sometimes be very wayward depending on which Rangers fan you're actually talking about. You've got Ryan Jack, another guy when he's on the part, what a team Rangers actually are but Jack who's just missed two months for playing 11 minutes for Scotland he's just back which is great for the club but it's another one that's picked up a knock. You've got Todd Cantwell who Obviously went off the park versus Hibs with what looked like to be a knock, but he had a knock earlier on in the season as well. Came back, was wearing a bandage or a strap, ruined his actual leg to play through the pain barrier for this football club. And another one whose form and fitness goes up. And doing Raskin's just back for a three month injury, ladies and gentlemen, making his comeback versus Hibs. We're not done just yet. Jose, big Jose, who again was another one like the Amadi, who's came with a great reputation. And I'm not holding that against either one of them. Jose's clearly got Sahan. You didn't get a whisker away if you join him Brighton if you've no got the talent and ability, but he's just been struggling with form and fitness. More importantly, the injuries. I think that's played a massive part in why we've not seen a lot of him because. He picked up an injury, he came in when everybody else was doing, had to play several games because we literally had no one else and he's ended up relapsing. So he's picked up an injury. That's five for five so far in terms of Rangers centre midfielders who has spent time this season injured or, if you want to go back for Stephen Davis, the season before. But again, we're still not done. Tom Lawrence is another one who comes in and out like he's shaking it about. What a player when he's able to play, but terms of injury and fitness we can't rely on the laddie unfortunately and hopefully that turns a corner now and we can get to see him because what a player he is but he's another one that's been shaking it back and forth. Kieran Dowell is the next player we're going to talk about and one we were all excited about just about a month ago wanting to see more and wanting to see more of them whilst Kieran Dowell's just had his second major injury of the season. The first one made him miss two months of the season. He's came back, worked his way into the squad, looked good but now he's going to be missing for at least another two months as he's just heart surgery. So that is seven centre mids that was in the football club and used a lot whenever you saw and you typed it in. How many midfielders does Rangers have? How many centre mids does Rangers have? I would say seven. And I would say we didn't need it. And I've seen it in the comment section. We've got six or seven players in the centre midfielder role. We've got six or seven midfielders. We didn't need any more. Have a look at the availability and look at that. And if you want your eyes wide and even more, ladies and gentlemen, both Scott Wright and Robbie Matundo have been listed as midfielders for this football club and both of them as 
spent major time out with injuries as well. Scott Wright apparently played centre mid versus Aberdeen. That must have been the game he got sent off. And Rabbi Matundo apparently played central once for Rangers so far as well. So if you want to chuck them in there, because of what's actually been listed, that is more midfielders, guys that can affect the middle of the park that's been out with injuries. And I know everyone's screaming at me right now saying, what about Dujon still? And he's been arguably our best centre midfielder and I agree with you on that aspect he's right there with John Lundstrom in terms of minute per minute and how good his actual look but let's think about it Sterling's just back he's coming off the bench right now because he got injured for the second time in a Rangers shirt he spent the large majority of the first half of the season being injured under Michael Beale at that point he'd probably played him as a goalkeeper knowing Beale but eventually came back in looked very good picked up a knock and spent and he's just back so even a full back playing out of position playing in the middle of the park that only played there because everybody else was unavailable has had his injury problems and you start to look at that you look at the amount of people that's there Every single player that has played centre midfield for Rangers either this season or going into the last season that is still on the books at Rangers has been injured and had several lengthy injury periods. So people's asking and saying, why have we went and got a midfielder? Why have we got a young, robust midfielder, Touchwood, that's not had many injuries in his career? Why have we went ahead and do that? Take a step back and look, ladies and gentlemen, it is massively glaring why we've done that. Our midfield department for years has been an absolute mess and been riddled with injuries. So to go and get a young lad that again is robust, that is fit, that can run all day is exactly what we need because remember what won us the league the very last time. It was the engine room that provided us the spine to go ahead and do what we'd done undefeated in terms of the league. And you argue and you ask, why is there no consistency on the part? Because there's no consistency off the part. What can you work with? What can you tactically when one guy's in one week, injured the next week, see you in three months, see you in three months, see you in three months, full back, full back guys, that has been out for months, it's been a mess ladies and gentlemen, so to answer the question, do we need a midfielder, yes, and I'm excited and delighted that it's been a Mandy. But to narrow in more away from the club and what we need to the man himself, in case you didn't see the rumour video, just to give you a wee bit of numbers and stats, a wee bit more information, again he is a very skillful, technically gifted midfielder that is known for getting beyond his man, always playing on the half shoulder, got that quick turn, Glenn Kamara in his prime-esque, if you will, and I've seen some people scoff at that, saying Kamara was crap, he wasn't crap ladies and gentlemen, look at the old form since we've no had a Glenn Kamara, we needed somebody like him that can take it in and beat people and run, no just use the ball to beat people, we need individuals to step up, be brave and take men on, sometimes for the middle of the park, Kamara was really good at that when he was actually at it and Diamande has showed that in his young career so far, that is the type of player he actually is, because he didn't get as many goals and the amount of assists for the middle of the park at his age, if you are not an attack minded, but let's not forget about going the other way either, as the man's picked up 26 yellow cards in his young career so far. Which for me, when you're looking at a centre midfielder, is nearly as important as the goals and the assists, because it tells you what type of midfielder he is, you know what I mean? If he was getting a couple goals, couple assists, no yellow cards, wasn't really getting stuck in, didn't have a good tackle, success, interception, blah, 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 you'd be sitting saying, if we just signed someone who's maybe just like has gone forward and the interest and gone back, and we can't afford players like that because we know what we need in terms of the old engine room, box to box, as that's what you'll be doing the majority of the game, picking the ball up for deep, driving forward than trying to break down 99.9% .9 of part of the bus actual squad. So that's great to see that for the laddie, but also when you start to dive into the attacking side, it does get you excited, especially when you remember his age as well. And it's funny, because we look at our academy players around 20, 21, 22, like they're babies, right? We say, oh, they're really young, we need to give them time, we need to get behind them. Then we're linked, or we sign people like the Tillmans that's 21, uh, the Seamers that's 22, the Diamades that's 22, and expect them to be the finished that are going to be complete players and treat them like they're old folk in their actual prime. No, we're getting someone like that but instead of some of the youth players we've been playing in that lately there's a one or two year difference look at the experience and the stuff they went through so let's get behind these young laddies as well and help build them up they will make mistakes of course they will the maddies know that all world beater that's going to be sensational he's probably going to frustrate the life of us sometimes because of what he tries when he goes forward because he is so forward thinking I don't imagine his passing success rate will be sexy as it's going to be safe he isn't that type of player he's threading a needle he's trying 
trying to go forward. He's trying things with the ball, and that's because he's been brave, and that's the way he's came through the last couple of years of his career. Again, you didn't captain a side at the age of 21 years old, Troops, if you've not got something about you more than just we goals or we assists. He's got to up here as well and he's clearly a laddie that's focused on his career and that's been over the last couple years. Like this season was good enough as the man went ahead and picked up five goal contributions in all competitions including two and seven European appearances so far for him this year. By the way, just to give you a wee update, he can play for us in the Europa League despite playing in the U European, or the Conference League, sorry, in the first half of the season. So anyone worrying about that, he can play and he's already had European experience. Again, two assists in the five European matches that he's played but you might be thinking why has he only played 21 games and no stats aren't jumping out in you it's be because it's became quite clear that he is going to be moving on obviously they gave him the captain's armband they've let him wear the captain's armband in previous games and everything like that but then he wasn't signing a deal and he wanted to move elsewhere to follow his career and we know how that goes we've all been around football for long enough once you didn't sign that deal once you didn't commit you start dropping to the bench and that's his 21 games that he's played this season, if you look at the minutes, it's nowhere near what he's done over the last couple of years because they've been using him sparingly because he's clearly not been all in in their club as he's been waiting for his move up the road to Rangers. But it was the season before where he played 37 games in all competitions and grabbing 11 goal contributions that really grabbed the eye. Not only earning the armband, but the goals, the assists, the games, the Man of the Matches awards was absolutely sensational for someone at 21, which is why the Danish media speak about him the way that they actually do. That's why the journalist has been following the story and has been right about every single aspect, not only in terms of the loan, not only in terms of the 4.5 million, but the terms of the quality this lad has got. He is one of their brightest stars. And again, our director of football has talked about dipping into this market and picking up these gems. And that's apparently what we have right here at the football club is the man at the age of 22 years old has already got 118 games under his belt. Half of your midfielders over the last two seasons has not came close to that, ladies and gentlemen. In fact, if you put all your midfielders in there, they're notching just that. This guy's done it in a couple of years by himself. Robust, young, up and doing in the actual park. He's been a revelation in Danish football. And hopefully, that translates over to the club. And again, you can never tell with these things. It might take time. It might be a hit right away. I'm not a scout. And I, you know I mean? I'm just a fan of looking at it so we can discuss it right here in the channel. But everything we're hearing about the lad is all positive and something to get really excited about. And looking into his career and what he's done so far at his young age has given me nothing but something to look at and say, aye, he could be a real player for Rangers. And the 15 goals and the 14 assists in 118 games from the middle of the park can Considering the age that he actually is, the son you can certainly look at and say, aye, their son is the goals and the assists have been coming in the last two seasons, 21 and 22, when he's been heavily affecting the actual games. And that's truthfully all I've got to talk about regarding this. I'm very excited about this transfer. I let it known in the rumour video. I'd now love to hand the reins over to you guys and ask you your thoughts and opinions on this one. Are you happy? Are you mad? Are you sad? Or are you glad? I've seen some of your comments and your complaints. We didn't need a midfielder. We want a striker. We want this. Well, now that the deal is done, now we've dis discussed that we do, in my opinion, need a midfielder. What is your opinions down there in the old comment section below? Have they changed or are you still unhappy? You can let me know. And until next time, I've been CJ92. I'll see you tomorrow after the St. Mirren game. All the best and bye-bye.